this is kind of a treat for us, actually, to be able to do an event together. An event together. We have known each other for several years. I'm trying to think, three years now or so. Least, yeah. um, since, I want to say, I think before my first book came out and just yeah. after your first book came out. Brad. We've always talked about doing events together, but it's never actually happened. No, so no, it fun. hasn't. Now, now, all that said, we don't make you think that therefore, even though we've anticipated this a great deal, that we actually know what we're going to do up here or have actually planned anything out. We're, uh, we're, we're kind of winging it up here. But I think what we decided was that we would each introduce each other. You know, because you get so used to introducing yourself that we would so. This, ladies and gentlemen, is Hillary Davidson. She is the Anthony and uh, Barry, no, not Barry, the Anthony and Brad, Price Prey Award. I can't believe Award. you're already I, messing this I, up. Dang it. She's but never doing an event with me again. <laughs> this is the, I have uh, to do another event with him tomorrow. <laughs> yes, the Anthony and Crime Spree Award winning author of The Damage Done and most recently, The Next One to Fall. Uh, just to, for those of you who don't know what the Anthony Award is or the Crime Spree Award is, Crime Spree Award is given by Crime Spree Magazine, which is sort of one of the, the great fan fiction magazines in the, in the crime fiction world. And then the Anthony Award is, to me, I think, seriously, like, the best award you can win. Because it is voted on at BoucherCon, which is the World Mystery Convention, and it's voted on by fans. So this is not critics, this is not fellow authors, this is the people who you're actually theoretically writing for. And they declared Hillary's book uh, the 2010 uh, debut of the year. So, yeah, Thank you. I, I should add that Brad, um, months in advance of the of that voucher con, uh, so back I think when people were still nominating on the ballots, Brad announced to me that he was going to be the chairman of my Anthony Award yep. committee. So I, I think he has a big hand, actually. Yep. In, um, well, I set up one of those that. super PACs. They weren't legal yet, but I, I made one, and I, I, got, I was funneling all this money in from all over the place. And it, yeah. you know, we had a good organization. Well, you know, phone I, banks, everything like that. <laughs> So, and you know, to, to introduce Brad, I obviously have to talk awards as well because his debut did spectacularly well and won, uh, that was Faces of the Gone. Very good. And that was a uh, winner of both the Seamus Award um, which uh, and the Nero Award. So Seamus Award was actually awarded in Boucher, Boucher Con 2010, which is here in San Francisco. And uh, if you ever just have a free moment, you've got to actually go to Brad's website or even his Facebook page where he went around San Francisco carrying his Seamus Award and posing with sea lions and statues and, and everything else. Also giving it to random strangers, random strangers. and like, you know, or but just kind of... It was, it was a wonderful book and, um, you know, the funny thing I think about both of us is that we use our own backgrounds in our work. So, for instance, Brad was a newspaper journalist for years in New Jersey and he writes about Carter Ross, who is a newspaper journalist in New Jersey. Um, and I was a travel writer for, mm, in June it'll be, I guess, going 14 years. And my main character, Lily Moore, in The Damage Done and in The Next One to Fall was a travel writer. I didn't mention that this is now your third book. Sorry, okay. Girl Next Door is book number three. Uh, Faces of the Gone and then Eyes of the Innocent came out last year. Yes. Although we need to get one thing straight right off the bat, just for those of you who aren't familiar with the two of our works, there, there might be a certain tendency to think that because she's the girl and she's cute and she's wearing lavender and pink like that, that she's writing fluffy stuff and that me as the guy like my stuff must be really dark and noir no other way around like Hillary's Hillary's stuff is is definitely I mean she could kick my ass like writing fiction wise no no question like she's got she, if you I wouldn't fiction, get the chance to because you would make me keep laughing <laughs> so anytime I would try to, to do something like that but I, her, I don't hers is like to. Dark and noir, and like really sets a mood. That even, I, and I can say this quite sure because I'm actually I'm right in the middle of this book right now. And this is one of those books when you read it, it sort of follows you around, even when you're not reading it. Like it kind of, you feel like you're there. You feel like it's still inhabiting you. Is what I would say because it does do such a good job of setting that mood. Thank you. So yeah. So anyway, she's the tough one. I'm the pansy. Let's get that straight, you, right you, off the top. You can't really listen to him. Brad's books are incredibly funny. They are tremendously uh, sort of comical, humorous books, but at the same time, he does this amazing shift sometimes from light to dark, and he handles it so easily that it makes it look like it's very simple. It's actually, as a writer, one of the hardest things that you can do. So my hat is actually off to Brad, because he manages comedy and actually kind of strong, dramatic 
powerful writing as well. So see, I never thought actually that was well. I don't know. Like okay, I was a nerd growing up. This will not surprise anyone. So like books were always kind of my friend, you know, and I always liked friends who could be like silly but also serious, and who could be profound and talk about weighty matters, and then tell fart jokes. So like, because, so I don't know, so I always wanted to make a book that could be the same way, you know, like it kind of could mix, and I, and I think, it, and it's funny, the, the publishing world tends to think that a book needs to be one or the other, right? and right. I think they drastically underestimate readership when they do that, because readers, the ones I've met anyway, are plenty smart enough to handle the code switching that goes into, okay, this is obviously a serious moment, and it's okay, and and now we're just kind of having fun, you know, and cutting loose. So I don't know. I mean, exactly. I think it's. it's do, you, do you want to set a good segue for you to read maybe a little bit? I mean, we were both going to read a little bit tonight. Do you, you want to. Do you, do you want to jump in and read a little bit? Sure. Do you want to do that? And then. Yeah, is that good? We, we, we could do that. But you know what? Hillary, yeah. uh, ladies first. Oh. Please go, 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 go. Read. Really? Read, read, read. read. Yes. Okay. I just done. Well, 